Spotify. Hey guys, this is Alexei for CG Tooth Plus. I'm here from Ace5 Education. And this is a tutorial which covers, there was an old tutorial that I made called Create a Jumping Lamp in, in Cinema 4D. One of my first tutorials, check it out, it's on CG Toots. And it was very well received, very popular. But the thing is, over time, uh, there are some things that have changed that uh, were working and now they don't. And a friend of mine was recently doing this tutorial and he asked me a bunch of questions. And I decided to put it into the form of tutorial so other people can also see what the problems are. Because there have been a couple of problems that have arise, arisen over, you know, recently. So, let's get started. First thing he asked me was about area lights, how to adjust them. Because apparently it's different now. I think you used to be able to scale them, but now you actually have to use these things. So if we have an area light, and by default, sorry, I usually don't have, um, this is set to none. So here it is. We move it over, we rotate it, and right now, like if I scale it, it scales, you know, uh, uniformly. There's no way to scale it lengthwise, how I do my tutorial. Uh, the thing is, th you do it by not using the scale tools, but you actually use these little uh, green boxes, or they might be orange or blue, depending on your depending on your version of Cinema 4D, to actually affect how the light works. Uh, how you know white it is. As you can see there, you have the white line. Uh, however, you might not be able to see them if you're in point mode or edge mode, or you won't be able to see the green boxes. So always make sure you're in this mode, in the object mode, and you're in one of these tools, the move selection. Because if you're in like knife tool, also as you can see, they disappear. So you have to be in the one of these tools, and you have to be in this to see these points. And the same actually goes for the plane. The plane as well, if you scale it, it doesn't, you know, you can't scale individually, but it has these green dots, which also, once again, only seen when you are in uh, one of the tools that is up here, these four tools, or if you're, and you have to be in object mode. So, area light, uh, there you go, covered, how to fix that issue. Ah, the next thing, key interpolation. Uh, when you animate something, for example, if I go F9, and right now, uh, during screen recorder, keys don't, key frames don't work. F9, key frame, set key. What happened to, yeah, it's F9, yeah, it's just my screen recorder is interfering with F9. So anyway. When you have the object moving, and then, for example, here, you know, go set another key, uh, there's a couple of differences. First, yeah, so let's go interpolation. In my tutorial, I say that uh, we want to do step interpolation. So, and I click on this little thing here, and usually here, you, and you used to be able to pick default interpolations from here, there's an option. But now that's actually moved to the Control D menu, which is the project settings. If you go edit, project, uh, settings and here you have key interpolations and you can now set the default for example to linear or step so now when I make a new object a new object here scale them down and if I set a keyframe then I go to 20 and I set another keyframe then I go to 28 and I set another keyframe it will jump at each keyframe to the right place so that's where the new interpolation options are. Control D and there are key interpolations. Uh, furthermore, we have this other issue where if we have, for example, a bunch of objects and we press Shift F3 to go to the timeline, you will see there are no objects here. Um, it's empty. Whereas in my video, when you open a timeline, uh, you can also open it through window and timeline wherever the timeline, there will be all the objects listed and all my materials. The reason is because in the new versions of Cinema 4D, it only shows you things that you've already animated. So if you put a keyframe on this cube, it will appear in a timeline. To fix this, you go View, Show, and unselect this. And now you can see all the objects that are in your scene. And you, know, you can start applying keyframes and viewing what's going on. 
the next thing that's also changed is in the old version of Cinema 4D, if you, for example, have a cube here, let's change our interpolation back to spline, and we keyframe him, and then we move to hello. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I thought I muted it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and we set a new keyframe, for example, here, here, and then we move him up to about here. In the old version of Cinema 4D, you'd have this, uh, it would kind of slope down in this space because there was this easing thing. If you go to Shift F3, I can show you what the, to simulate the behavior. We select all these and we go spline type soft. That's what was the default one. So you would have this kind of dip underground. It would kind of dip a bit before going back up. And I said you have to select, uh, for example, this one here and you have to make it linear and then it won't do that. But in the new version that's all fixed so you don't have to worry about things syncing. If here it's an ease, ease setting by default in the new version so if you have two keyframes in the same uh, value they will not move and add jumps. But if you do want to add that effect back because in some parts of the show I did you select the keyframes where you want to have it and you right click and you go spline type soft instead of ease ease. So, that's covered. Ah, in one part I hide a bunch of objects, um, as you can see in, this is the file he sent me. I hide a bunch of objects and unfortunately my layer panel is off screen. Basically it's just layer panel, you use this, uh, you know, you can hide things from layer panel, uh, yeah, to not see them in the, in the object manager or in the viewport, which makes everything a lot more organized when animating. Uh, yes. Okay, good. That was the first introductory part. So now the important bit, the uh, broken piece here. So this is what a lot of people are complaining about, is the lamp uh, kind of at some point just goes berserk. The reason is these parent tags. Unfortunately, in some version of Cinema 4D, I'm not sure which one, but the parent tag just became mostly useless. Uh, I don't know what happened to it, but it stopped working. So now you always have to use a PSR constraint instead of the aim, instead of the parent control. So let's delete all these constraints and let's uh, fix this up a bit. Let's go into side view. Okay, so firstly let's get our lamp head and move it into the correct location. So we're back where we're meant to be. Let's move out. Let's rotate it. Our upper leg, no, let's get our lower leg, rotate it up. This thing, really the lower, let's move this, oops. The upper leg, let's move that up as well, rotate it over. Let's turn snapping on by holding here, enable snapping. And we will snap. Hold the P key and go snap to access snap. Now we should be able to snap to access. There we go. Now where is this little piece? Snap that to access as well. Awesome. Okay, now our lamp is more aligned. Now what we're going to do is we're going to not use the parent constraint anymore. We're going to go back to using a PSR constraint. And what that means is we'll need to adjust it a bit. So let's add our... Firstly, we don't need this many of them. I'm not sure what I did in the tutorial, but... Uh, foot, where is this? Base. Now this should be inside the base. Lower leg. This thing should be connected to the upper leg, or in the upper leg. What's that? I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, we're gonna use a, we're gonna use PSR constraint instead of. So let's go cinema 4D tags constraint no character tags constraint. So turn off this auto key. Uh, PSR. And in PSR we're gonna get our base and plug it in. As you can see, that offsets it slightly. So we're gonna go offset and maintain original. And now the base does not work again. So let's go back to our parent. Let's not maintain original. 
what we do is we go to our base object and we grab we grab these two objects and we move them up into the correct position so that they are aligned correctly now our base there you go it works similarly for the lower leg similar for the character tag constraint psr and plug the what is it our, yeah, it's our base as well isn't it not on our base it's our base joint yes and as you can see we have some offsetting again so what we do is we get our objects inside the lower leg and we rotate them over and we oops and we shift them holding the shift key to lock rotation let's turn off snapping and we adjust them so they are correctly placed and now when our base moves the, the joints move with the layers so I'll break this part. no joints bones. as you can see now when the base moves that object moves so yes and you slowly go through and you attach them and you attach the PS you use a PSR constraint and then you move the stuff inside the null to the correct position and then it works so and basically what PSR does is it attaches objects let me demonstrate this quickly um, let's make a phone what it does is basically it's a position size rotation constraint and it attaches the axis of this object this one it'll align it to this cube now if so uh, yeah so if you want this cube to be the main pair if you want basically this kind of behavior but you want to achieve it with tags instead of hierarchies you go character and you go constraint now if you add parent constraint and you pull the cube your parent and you pull the cube in and you move the cube you will get expected behavior but unfortunately there's just something wrong that whenever like I every time I try to use this in a project the parent tag breaks I don't know why it just does so I just don't use it anymore if I want a parent tag I use a PSR constraint uh, but I don't use it uh, on this what I do is I make another I make a null uh, you go null and you put it under the cube or wherever your cube is. Let's say let's move these guys over so they're not at the origin. So what I do is I get a null and I move it under the cube and I go Shift C or you know you go Reset PS PSR and it'll move it to the origin of the cube. Or you can go Shift F12 and here I also have Reset PSR. I have this attached to tilde X. And then I take the null out of the cube and I put the cone into the null. And now I put this constraint tag on the null and I go PSR and I plug the cube into its into the target. And now again we have the cube and there it is. So uh, that's how I do this. You know, if you want to just if you have bones like in our system, let's get uh, Let's make some joints. Uh, okay, move them out. Delete the cube. Delete the, delete the cube. Okay. Now, if you have a null and you want to attack, you want to put on the joints. You just turn on snapping, and you turn on axis snapping, and now you can move the null, and it'll snap to the joints. That's how you relocate this null. And then once it's in position, you can get this PSR on the, you can attach, you know, you can now attach it to whatever joint you locate it on. And everything will move as if it has a parent tag on it. It just requires a bit of an extra step. Um, yeah, so that's, there it is. That's the adjustments, you know, that this tutorial requires with the new versions of Cinema 4D. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, go check out my jumping lump tutorial now that you know all the pitfalls that come with it. If there's anything I missed, ask me. I'll post a follow-up video or I'll answer your questions in the comments. You know, enjoy.